Mic check. Mic check. I see your hands up, Lisbon. What up, Lisbon? What's up? Bob Dia. Bob Dia. Working. So I'm pointing at the wrong thing. Here we go. Who do we have at the booth? Yeah, it's back there. Test, test. Maybe you should sit on the end. Um, what's the thing? We're all sitting there. No, it's okay. Uh, this way I'm in order of the screen. Right. All right. Good morning, Lisbon. How y'all doing? Let's hear it. Yeah, Lisbon's in the house. We are in the house. My name is Mean Brains, otherwise known as Eric, and I'll be your, mon your moderator today on today's panel about Ape Chain. We're going to talk about a lot of interesting things, but let's start with some context. You know, we're all of us here in this room, all of us in this planet, we are living in the age of decentralization. In 2009, when the Genesis block was mined and Bitcoin technology was introduced to the world, also known as blockchain technology, it also brought forth a geyser of creativity, of innovation, of ideas, and of questions. Questions like, what can we do better? How can governance work more effectively? How can we bring more accountability to governments and our political structures? And these types of questions, those are the questions that drew me into this ecosystem. Before all this, I had a normal life. Once in a ton of time, several years ago, I had a construction company uh, with, with a few dozen employees. And then these questions drew me to a greater calling to explore what the future of our gener like future generations for the next thousands year of years are going to look like. And that's what brought me to ApeCoin DAO. So I'm joined here today with my esteemed panelists here, and we're going to talk more and dive deep into this ecosystem. And uh, starting with, um, let's start from my right with, actually, let, let's start on the far side here with All City. If you could introduce yourself and share with share with everyone listening, what drew you to this ecosystem? What brought you here? Yeah, sure. So uh, my name is All City. I'm a, the lead governance steward at ApeCoin DAO. I got involved with the DAO through the airdrop. Uh, Ape started out as an airdrop for Board Ape and Mutant Ape holders. Uh, through that, I got involved with the DAO. Uh, we got grant funded for a magazine project called Beyond the Swamp. You can go over to the booth and grab one of those if you like. Uh, and just to be clear, we're going to be talking a lot today about working groups. Uh, we're talking Ape Chain as well. Uh, but ApeCoin DAO has a working group structure that's very unique from other DAOs, and uh, we're going to be diving right into that. So it's a wonderful ecosystem, and we're really excited to be here. Hi. Hi, everyone. I'm Dim. I'm a Metaverse steward uh, for ApeCoin. Uh, I've been involved with ApeCoin like, ever since the inception, as Old City mentioned, um, with the airdrop. I've been an Ape forever. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to do cool stuff, cool stuff for the co community that elected us as working group. And uh, yeah, cool. Yeah, I'm a Bojango guy. I'm the, the uh, sole me bit that's in the ApeCoin DAO with all the other apes. So yeah. represent the me bits. Um, but yeah, I, I've been in the DAO coming up on two years now. Um, and I just saw the ApeCoin DAO as arguably the biggest opportunity for builders and creators in Web3. Uh, we're a grant DAO, we fund awesome ideas, and, and I saw that and I wanted to get involved. And so I'm the secretary of the ApeCoin DAO now, and that's where we're at. Love it. So let's go through some basics here with ApeCoin as a token. So I'll see if you want to run us through some of the basics here and give some context. Yeah, so like I like I mentioned uh, a while back there, so ApeCoin was dropped to board Ape holders, mutant Ape holders back in March 2022. There was an airdrop. Uh, it's an ERC20 token, which means we're built on top of Ethereum. Um, now, when we talk about governance tokens in in DAO structures, it's very unique. It's 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 very interesting. So, if you own one ApeCoin, you really are a part of the DAO and you have a say at the DAO. So, we are a grants DAO, as Bojangle mentioned. So, you can with one Ape, you can submit your own proposal, but you can also vote on proposals. So, this is very interesting. Uh, it's very engaging, uh, and it's uh, again, it, it's a great ecosystem. So, when we talk about utility, utility is also another interesting thing. And so, with ApeCoin, we've got ApeChain coming. 
And uh, so with utility, you're going to be able to do certain things with ApeCoin, say on ApeChain. Uh, you know, we've also had lots of different access to different products, Gucci, different stuff like that, where you can purchase things uh, using ApeCoin. That's utility. That's, uh, that's what we're doing. And this is really meaningful to me because I'm, I'm just a regular community member. I'm, I'm a volunteer. I'm a contributor, just like thousands of other people are, just like anyone here can be. I'm here drawn by that passion and by that equal opportunity of anyone that has one coin can be a part of the DAO, can be a part of the decision-making process. Anyone with one ape coin can put up a proposal for as large or as small as it, you know, we want it to be. Uh, so, so let's move into that topic here of the DAO and of the community. And Dim, I wonder if you could explain to everyone listening a little more about what is the ApeCoin DAO and how does that work? Yeah, sure. So as the name says, DAO, so it's a decentralized organization, autonomous organization, basically. We are actually, I think I just wanted to highlight again that you mentioned the one ape. All you need is one ape to participate in the DAO. And I think this is not stressed enough. Because people are usually like, yeah, but my voting power is very low if it's only one A, because one A is one vote. But recently, and, and we are starting to see it more, like the community is starting to embracing uh, this aspect of it. And they have a say. So even with one A coin, your opinion matters. And actually the big guys, the, the, the big holders, they are listening to the voices on social media and stuff like that. So yeah, I just wanted to stress that. One ape coin, it's all you need to participate and it's very, very important and powerful. Uh, but yeah, I don't know if you want me to introduce work. Oh, yeah, we good, too. We can talk about delegations. delegations. So another very important aspect of ApeCoin DAO is, so Dim was doing a great job there talking about one ape, one vote. We also have what's called delegations. So Dim's part of the French Ape Yacht Club. I'm part of the Canadian, uh, the Board Club Canada, and we pool our votes together to have a bigger voice. Um, one thing that I'd really love to see in the future moving forward is more delegations forming with certain uh, ideologies, right? So maybe one group is really focused on gaming, if you like gaming, you can go over there, you delegate your votes to that group, and you really get a bigger say, right? It, uh, yeah, it works out really, really well. One important thing about delegations also is the way they are structured. So you will have delegations that will, res that will respect the voting power of each member, or like in the Friendship case, for example, I don't know, I have like 10% of the whole delegations, but my vote will have the same power as someone that holds 50% or even just one ACON. So it means through delegations, you do have an extra layer of governance that is very interesting at community level. And again, voting through your delegation means that you are representing a group and a voice to a group, not you in, in one side. And this is very, very important too. I love it. And when I mentioned the questions, like how can we improve governance in the world? To me, when I, as a community member, when I look at the delegation structure and the structure of ApeCoin DAO that the Bajangle is going to tell us about in a second, this is the this is the topic. This is where I get to be involved in a liquid democracy, in a representative liquid democracy, and to see where this is going to you know impact our future generations. So on the structure of ApeCoin DAO. Bojangle guy, I wonder if you could uh, tell us on how the ApeCoin DAO is structured. Yeah, so the DAO is really comprised of three. Do you want to get the slide up over here? Um, so we have the Ape Foundation. That's the legal entity that runs the DAO. We're a Cayman Islands Foundation, um, obviously based out of the Cayman Islands. Uh, they're the ones that administer the grants. So if you submit an idea to ApeCoin and you get voted to have your grant approved, you'll receive that grant from the Ape Foundation. We then have special counsel. You can look at them as like the uh, the board, right? The board of executives. Um, they really are the ones that are out forming partnerships with ApeCoin. We obviously have this huge partnership that we just launched with ApeChain and Arbitrum. Uh, so ApeChain is going to be built with Arbitrum and Horizon Labs. That's a huge special counsel initiative voted on by the community. They didn't just go out and do it on their own. Uh, and then we have working groups, which is what we're here to talk about. So. The working groups is the way that the ApeCoin DAO has decided to more or less put themselves into productivity mode. Um, we have a governance working group. All City here is the lead steward of that group. DIM is the, the steward of the metaverse working group. We also have a marketing and communications working group. And we now have a Web3 development working group. Uh, you can look at those as more or less people that the community voted on to 
just go out and focus on that one thing, right? Dim is a metaverse legend. He's a gaming legend. He knows what he's doing. And so the community has said, Dim, we trust you. Go out and just kill it in the metaverse for ApeCoin, right? Doesn't mean he just goes and does things unilaterally without talking to the DAO, but they know that he has the connections and that he can make those things happen. And he's just pushing the metaverse forward. Alternatively, all city governance, right? He's big on education. He's big on making sure that the DAO is set up to succeed, right? So that's how the, the DAO is set up structurally. So now the first one that you mentioned was the foundation and that's of uh, a critical importance. So maybe all city, if you could uh, share with everyone listening, what is the foundation and what, what role does it play? How does that work? Well, I think the first thing that's very important to recognize is the foundation is distinctly different from working groups. And Bojangle did a good job to uh, to explain that, but it's very important to sort of recognize. Um, you know, and, and also on rare occasions, they may actually help steward proposals. So I don't know if you guys have seen it, but ApeCoin is actually sponsoring a Formula One team now, the Alpine team. Uh, Dim's very close to this situation as well. And the Ape Foundation actually worked with uh, Alpine to, to bring that uh, proposal to life to the community, which the community still voted on ultimately. Um, again, yeah, distinctly different. Um, I think Bojangle did a pretty good job to sum that up. Just the most important thing to really remember is it's a Cayman Foundation. And uh, so look at them again uh, as kind of the, uh, the administration and the working groups as sort of these community voted, like we're all elected up here, um, who represent different aspects of the DAO. Now, we talked about briefly the special counsel's role with the foundation. And so maybe I can pass this question off to Dim if you wanted to share a little more about how special counsel works and what's its role with the ApeCoin DAO. Sure. So you can see them on the screen, these beautiful apes, basically. But special counsels, they are elected by the community. So as a vote, you have uh, three seats that are actually elected every December, starting their term in January 1st, so for a full year. And there is two other seats that are actually going to be elected um, next month. Um, that would be real. So five special council members. So as you said, um, they operate uh, the Apoint DAO, linked with the foundation and all. Very important also, uh, what Bojangles said is like, they are bringing ideas, they are bringing stuff that most of the community doesn't see because it's very like, it's in the back end. We can call it the back end of the Apecoin DAO. But what's very important is that ultimately it's the community that is deciding, is this a good idea? Of course, we trusted you, we put you, we elected you, but it's very important to have the community actually deciding at every level on the bigger decision, just like the Alpine uh, partnership, Ape Chain, et cetera. So that's very cool. But yeah, they review all the grants, uh, the AIP proposal. I'm gonna stress again, the one ape coin matter because with only one ape coin, you can actually submit an AIP. You can request for a grant and, and actually you have a real shot at it. It's not because you don't have a million ape coin that you can win it. If you have a good idea, if you are the, well, the good person to execute it, if you have the right team and the right ambition and your heart is at the right place, because this is important and the community sees it, you do have a shot uh, uh, with your AIP. So we have the community, then we have the foundation, then we have the special council, and then Bojangle guy, you mentioned a bit about working groups already, and uh, I wonder if you have anything else you want to share on working groups, or, or we'll just dive right into the, the intricacies of them. Yeah, I think we just dive right in. I've already listed them off, so just dive into what each working group is set out to do. Okay, well, uh, let, let's start with Dim here, if you want to dive in a little bit deeper into uh, the working groups. 100%. So I talk about Metaverse only, right? Only my working group. So Metaverse working group is very dear to my heart. And, and basically the mission is simple, is to bring the eight point culture in Metaverse and gaming um, through cool activations, uh, cool partnerships, and, and things like that. Um, going through... Um, the, the the different things that I, I, I wanted to mention basically um, was the experiences and, and actually um, gaming projects uh, kind of. So the first initiatives was to actually design what we call the ApeCoin Other Side Strategy. Other Side to this day is the only and biggest metaverse that announced that will be running on ApeCoin. Its whole economy will be ApeCoin. So we needed to have uh, a say in this, we needed to have a space, we needed to actually make ApeCoin big into other side. So going through a back and forth with the community, they decided to allocate a budget that will go to, to vote in the upcoming weeks or, or months maybe, 
to actually build on the other side in the name of Apecoin, to bring a home to the Apecoin community on the other side, but activate in, in also uh, different ways. Gaming partnerships, this is very important, something also dear to my heart. And we are going to activate through the year, through different partnerships and gamings. Um, you don't need to be actually the, the main token of a game to actually be relevant. And that's how I see Apecoin. You don't need to run on Apecoin to actually bring Apecoin culture to your game or experiences. And we couldn't do it in different ways. There will be uh, special, for example, um, Apecoin weeks in some game that you will see across the year where you have a special leaderboard and you can actually uh, win, win some Apecoin or cool digital collectibles. Um, another thing that is dear to my heart and it's been one of the big uh, projects that I've been defending is the Apecoin Creators Assembly. It was announced last month uh, at the Banana Conf, actually in Estonia, and the idea to give a home to all the creators uh, in the Ape in the Ape community. So through different monthly event and all like uh, workshops, uh, networking events, both IRL, digital, um, we are going to give a home to them, and they can access also small grants and actually um, this kind of stuff. So very important to get this tissue of creators within the Ape community to partner together. And we mentioned, for example, Alpine. The, the, the Alpine partnerships at the metaverse level, it was actually sealed last week through a partnership with Alpine Web3, um, Web3 division. We are going to be very close and, and get these two communities, the Alpine community and, and the Apecoin community, way closer. The initiative is called Ape Racing and Alpine will be, will be part of it. But it's very fun because it's not going to be like only team up with the community, but maybe we will be at some point, uh, I don't know, may, maybe fighting against them in some racing events and stuff like that. So this is, go this is going to be fun. But we, from here, you can see a booth right across the corner. It's called Iconics World. And what they are building is actually a layer on top of the racing simulator called Assetto Corsa. And through Ape Racing, this is actually announced right now, we are going to have an Apecoin uh, racing team. So if you're into racing simulations, keep your eyes open. You are going to be able to compete as Apecoin in Iconics world uh, for, for some cool stuff. And yeah, metaverse experiences. Uh, I'm not sure if I have maybe a second to talk about this. Thing. We have some slides later on. Oh, later on to that? Yeah. So yeah, so maybe we'll go deeper afterwards. Awesome, thank you. You know, well, when I joined, the, oh, that's when fantastic. I, oh. When I joined uh, ApeCoin DAO, uh, I was really excited about the gaming implications and how is this going to help the gaming ecosystem. And since I joined, it's been amazing. We have Ape Chain coming up really, really soon. We have the marketing, uh, sorry, we have the the Metaverse working group that's now established that wasn't there when I first came in. So it's pretty exciting. Now all of this comes together. All of this structure has a a method around it, and there's people that are working behind the scenes to let the whole community function effectively. And this is the, the governance working group. And this is where All City Specialty is uh, as the lead of the governance working group. So All City, can you share with us how the governance working group works and its role inside the DAO? And uh, yeah, take it away. Yeah, for sure. Maybe we can uh, move the slide down a little bit. So the governance working group, again, is a working group. It's a community operated, uh, we're all elected. Um, so that's us there. Uh, we're currently, there's a, it's a six person team right now. We're going to have a third steward pretty quick here. So there's going to be seven. We work with a ton of different brands. We work with lots of different content. We work, we have a, con a small content creation team. And uh, really what we do is we focus on processes. Uh, there is a lot of BD involved too, some business development. And um, yeah, man, I, I love talking about all this kind of stuff. Uh, we really are aiming to be sort of this gold standard of what a working group should be. So I talk a lot about building the working group blueprint. And so this is something that I'm very passionate about. It's something that we're really focused on uh, really kind of refining uh, some of the things that we do that's a little bit different than other, other DAOs, which we will probably chat about a little bit later is, you know, like one thing is we, we really do want to embrace the decentralized ethos. And so each working group is actually not only autonomous from one another, but we also have our own uh, legal structures, which is quite interesting. So for example, the governance group, um, we actually have a nonprofit, uh, nonprofit that's uh uh, that's a nonprofit DAO LLC out of the Marshall Islands. Um, so some of the other initiatives that we really kind of work on is, again, we're talking a lot about ApeChain. We've got so much different stuff coming for ApeCoin this year, the big Formula One activation and all that good stuff. So for me, 
I really want to see the community getting stronger, right? So I really want to see our AIP authors, those are uh, the name of our proposals, getting stronger, getting better. So how can we do that? So we're introducing a whole bunch of different stuff uh, like mentorships, uh, ambassadorships, all this kind of stuff where we can work with people. So if you've got those ideas, you got that one ape, you want to come over to ApeCoin, we're going to be able to work with you a little bit closer, kind of pull the curtain back a little bit, help show you what a good proposal should look like, what the community is typically voting on. And um, yeah, lots of good stuff like that. We're actually working with Open Campus and Forbes. So Forbes has got a new wing called Forbes Web3. Um, and so we're rolling out this this initiative called APU. You can see the logo on the back side of our wall over there. It's really fun, um, but lots of different stuff. We're do, we're also doing small grants. So ApeCoin DAO has never really done small grants before. We've never really done anything on chain. Um, I should also mention that the governance working group just passed. We just we had a big win just recently. We passed a 1.3 million, just under 1.3 million dollar budget. Um, 53% of that going back into the community, right? So it's going back into the community as small grants. 32% of that, I think, is going into education. So really, really just focused on the community and really strengthening the community for 2024. Yeah. To me, when I look at the small grants program, it's very exciting. As a community member, I, I did put a proposal up and I did put it up for a vote and the community did rally around it and grill me on the on the hot spot and and ultimately it passed. So I, I am a grant recipient from the ApeCoin DAO, just like anyone else listening to this could be a recipient from a grant at the ApeCoin DAO. And you got to go through the process. Uh, and so the small grants program was really exciting to me because it, it's even easier to access the, the support of the community. So I'm really excited to see that come out. And uh, Bojangle guy, oh. Yeah, just one other thing. So one thing that we're experimenting with as well, so we're really always trying to look to, to expand the ecosystem. So how can we get more people into ApeCoin? So one thing that we're, we're, we're currently developing right now with this small grants program is what we're calling these bespoke programs. So let's say you're from Will to Women or maybe you're from Chimpers or another great project. We're actually going to you and we're saying, listen, uh, we want to get you involved with ApeCoin. So here we've got 8,500 Ape. Let's build out a program, like a bespoke program, just for you guys. We understand that you don't have Ape. So we're actually going to be incorporating different NFT projects contracts into the uh, the contract with Uma for the on, for the on-chain stuff so that they'll be able to actually vote. Like, so for example, on here, you see MeBets. So uh, Bojangle, big MeBets. So we hope to be working with MeBets down the road where they're going to actually be able to vote with their MeBets on those bespoke programs, right? The, we're going to be building a proposal with them at the end. And of course, the big goal getting them to buy ApeCoin and continue on with governance after that, right? Now, uh, Dim, I know that you mentioned a moment ago uh, about the uh, the Creators Assembly, and this is a huge initiative with you. And I wondered if we could touch a little bit on, let's say, you know, two years down the road, what's your vision of where, uh, what's the impacts that you're expecting for this to, to make? What can we all look forward to and, and think about? So, OCT talked a lot about the small grants, and this is also very important in, 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 in the creator's assembly. Um, small grants are very important because the process of AIP is taking a while. It's, it, you, it's not something that you will start on Monday and on Sunday if you will have the decision and, and the funding the next Monday. It takes a while. But when you're a small creator, and I, I talk to creators all day long, and I don't know, maybe you have a good product or you have something, but you just need, I don't know, maybe 2K, 3K, 4K. It's very hard to actually go to the whole AIP process, especially if you're alone at home working on your cool stuff. The Creators Assembly will actually be a way to give a voice to these people through this funding and allow them to do cool stuff for ApeCoin without going through the bigger hustle that requires more work and, and more help. And, and, and basically what I would love to see the ApeCoin Creators Assembly down the road in, in, for example, two years is maybe being autonomous on their side and it will be great. I mean, there is so much we can do in a day, right? Or in a week. And in the end, we are not, uh, we, are, we don't have stewards in every country in the world. I would love to have the, the Brazilian creators part of the assembly through their, I don't know, like annual, uh, ApeCoin ACA Fest in Brazil, where they can come and speak about that. So this is what I would love to actually nourish this, this community of builders to actually allow them to do their stuff, what they do well, 
uh, continuously around the world. And this will be uh, a, a good stuff. What's also very important about the Acorn Creators Assembly and its touch, for example, as an example, the F1 uh, activation that we are doing with Alpine, 100% of what's being built for this activation. So it's a website called Acorn Closet where apes can actually dress as pilots during the race. This is developed by Halo and ape members of the Acorn Creators Assembly. The, the suit has been designed by Jacopo Lanza, another member of the Creators Assembly. And there is something that I'm announcing today, uh, it's badges, so all these apes that are actually uh, dressed during the F1 team will have specific badges that will start uh, living on other page, another member of ApeCoin Creators Assembly uh, this week. So it should be within the next few days. So this is how we bring this networking stuff and how we leverage the Abe community. Um, if we could back up the slides just a minute, I just wanted to make sure that everybody saw the Ape U branding really quick because you're going to start to see it quite a bit more. So if you back it up, just that's the uh, that's the Ape U branding. So this is this is a this is the uh, the education initiative that we're about to roll out pretty quick. The the new campus crew is working so hard. I've been working with them since December. Again, you see Forbes Web three up there. That's our mascot. So definitely make sure that you're keeping an eye out for that on social media and everywhere else. Thank you. And uh, now, of course, also very important is the the marketing working group. And Bojangle guy, maybe you could share a little bit about that. Yeah. So, kind of cool. So it's it's interesting when you look at a DAO, right? Before all this structure got set up, the the question was, well, who's going to market the DAO, right? And he pointed at him, and she pointed at her, and it, it was like, I don't know, who's going to do this, right? And that's what's cool about these working groups is we now have a team, right? We have somebody two people, we're gonna have a third steward elected in July um, to just do marketing, right? Uh, we've talked quite a bit about the F1 activation. I don't know if we have any F1 fans in the house, right? It's pretty cool to watch an F1 race and see ApeCoin on the side of the car, right? Like, it's crazy. It, it seems so crazy, but uh, our marketing team is great. Um, they have a ton of events that they're, that they're gonna be working on. Got the ApeCoin activation. Uh, they were in South Africa. Um, yeah, you're going to just now, now that we have a dedicated team that's going to start marketing a point, right? It's just going to, it's going to start growing and you're going to start seeing it everywhere, like on the side of F1 cars, which is wild. So they're doing awesome and, uh, can't wait to see what they do next. At the beginning of our, our little panel here, I was talking about what can we do differently? How can we improve systems across the world? And how can we experiment with that in the context of decentralized communities? And this is a really important topic to me, to us, to all of us here. So All City, I wonder if you could kick us off a little bit. Uh, maybe we can start with the legal structures and what's yeah. unique about that? Why is that important? So the legal structures are very important in a decentralized system because jurisdiction to jurisdiction, it changes drastically, right? So different countries, different, again, different jurisdictions have different rules. Um, you know, backing it up, talking about the Ape Foundation being very distinctly different from working groups. Um, it's, it's, there's a lot of benefits to the system. So working groups can kind of do different things that maybe the Ape Foundation doesn't want to touch. Uh, like, for example, we can start bringing in revenue. Technically, the Ape Foundation has announced that they're open to that as well, and it is coming, so I should correct myself, but um, we're capable of doing that. So what does that look like? Well, it could look like a whole bunch of different things. Like, I hope to see products starting to get released, right? Um, and this is all possible. So the independent legal structures really are a wrapper to protect us. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, they, they do a great job, right? Because again, there's so many different laws out there. So to be able to have something, and it's also good for taxes and being a nonprofit, it's got a lot of benefits as well. So. And, you know, we mentioned grants a couple times already. We talked about our, our AIP process, which is the APE improvement proposal process that anyone can submit who has one APE coin or more. We talked a little bit about the small grants program and its relevancy. And I wondered um, if either of you had any other comments on the, uh, uh, the small grants program coming out and how that differs here and why it's important for the APE coin community. Yeah, maybe we can both go on it. So, uh, and I think what's going to be important here is to kind of discuss a little bit more and maybe slow it down a little bit 
and explain this 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 acronym that we keep using AIP, right? So it's an ape improvement uh, uh, <laughs> proposal, <laughs> and so it's an AIP, right? So that's what we call that's our proposals. Uh, it's a lengthy process. It's uh, it's a worthwhile process. You're going to see proposals going through that are quite large, medium sized, sometimes smaller. What the small grant stuff is going to do is it's going to speed that right up. Um, there's also a KYC requirement for AIPs. Um, with, a, with a lot of the small grant programs, you're not necessarily going to have to KYC. We're going to take that on. Again, we've got our own legal structures, so we can kind of manage that. And it's just going to be a quicker, a faster process. Uh, for the governance working group in particular, we're going to be doing everything on chain, which means that once it gets voted on, it's it, it goes out, right? There is going to be a little bit of a delay with, with UMA, but uh, overall, it goes out pretty quickly. So the benefits, AIP process, ApeCoin DAO, a little bit longer. Much bigger sort of, uh, you know, much bigger uh, results in the end if you're looking for them. Small grants, smaller grants, and quicker. And uh, this is a question for either of you. The topic of balancing voter delegations, right? And anyone that's been a part of a DAO or a decentralized community for a while has bumped into this scenario where maybe some people have a stronger voting power than others. And sometimes that, that distance, the spread between large voting power and small voting power can be so big that it raises questions about is it fair and how do we balance that and how do we work through some of these unique challenges that pop up on the uh, on our roadmap. So uh, either whichever one of you would like to jump in on that topic of balancing voter power, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the future here at ApeCoin DAO on that topic. Well, look, it's a very polarizing topic, right? And there's never going to be one right way to do it. Okay, so the first thing, you know, uh, to back it up to when I was talking about delegations at ApeCoin DAO, these are these are a hot topic, right? There's a lot of good that comes out of these. And I, I, I believe it's all good, right? But what it does end up happening is uh, the big ones get bigger and bigger. But I think what people miss, and again, delegations being pools of voters, pooling their, pooling their votes together, is the fact that it's pools of voters. So people tend to look at these at these results and they see, you know, I'm not going to name names, but maybe they see a, a, a big delegation that votes and they go, oh, that's not fair. Well, look, there's 150 people that voted on that behind the scenes, right? And so in terms of balancing things out, um, we do have a delegate accelerator program that's coming. I don't know if I would refer to it as balancing things out. Um, but one thing that the governance group is doing is we have a delegate accelerator program, right? And that we're going to be incorporating with the bespoke uh, area of our small grants where we're going to be able to go to these different communities, again, using maybe Chimpers, World of Women, and we'll be able to delegate our own votes so that they don't leave our wallet and we can say, hey, listen, here's 5,000 ape that you can vote with, right? And then we're going to work with them and, and look at the results, talk about the results, and build towards something greater. So again, not to correct, but it's not so much about balancing anything for me. It's just more about giving exposure to new communities in the governance structure. Um, I will say as well, the governance group has a great study coming very quickly. All the numbers are crunched by a community member. Um, also very important to recognize that we tap into our community. So we have a, a, a community governance improvement program where we can lean into people and say, hey, listen, we need this done. We know that you're a data guy. Uh, here's 258. Can you crunch these numbers for us, right? And it, it's very beneficial for everyone. And this report that's going to be coming out very soon, uh, it actually shows all of our proposal voting results from the inception of ApeCoin DAO with different methodologies of voting, right? So right now it's one Ape, one vote. We're going to be able to show you, we're going to break it all down with quadratic, uh, one wallet, one vote, all this kind of stuff. And the most interesting thing about it, because I've seen all the numbers, the differences aren't as wild as you might think. Um, it, especially with quadratic, it's like a 16% difference, right? Where you do see the big difference, of course, is one wallet, one vote. But hey, it's, it's going to be very interesting. I, I really can't, uh, can't wait to release this. It's great info. And just as we, uh, we get, well, we're about to wrap up here. We've got about a minute and a half left at most. And I thought to uh, just ask a little bit about this concept of progressive governance. You know, a lot of people in this ecosystem, myself included, I look at the governance structure of any community and I think, oh, if they have a governance structure, it should be for, it should be perfect, right? It should just, we should just walk in and it runs exactly as we would imagine our wildest dreams instantly with no extra work required. But in reality, there's, there's a progression here. There's evolution, there's learning, there's lessons, there's other people's perspectives and opinions. So on the topic of progressive governance here, just as we wrap up, uh, wh whoever wants to jump in on that topic, here, would love to hear. I 
I don't want to hog the mic. I want to pass it off to everybody here. But for me, what progressive governance is, it's all of this, right? It's bringing education to everyone. It's putting rewards back into everyone's pockets. It's really working with the communities. It's not about us. It's about the community, right? And so to me, that's progressive and, and brand partnerships and, and all that good stuff. Finding that blend of sort of, I hate saying it, but the web two sort of traditional approaches that work and web three. So to me, that's progressive governance. Yeah. I agree. Community transparency and also being able to bring the tools to the community that they need to actually uh, being able to govern in, in, in the right way. Yeah, I think for me, it's the, where we are today was the community we didn't just walk into this and have some central web two entity that said, Hey, this is how you're going to do it. It took the ApeCoin DAO the better part of two years to even get to where we are now. And it's changes all the time. So in fact, at our booth, we're giving away 500 ApeCoin for the best idea for ApeCoin. If you have a governance idea, let us know if you have an idea for anything, right? So that's, that's the way I see it is. Everything we do is ran by the community and it's it's ever changing. It's never the same. And our final question here on today's panel is a short one in a one liner. I'm gonna ask the same question to each of you. What to you is the most important part of the ApeCoin DAO? Or the part that you like the most? How will make it easier? I'll make it easier. What is your favorite part of the ApeCoin DAO? For me, it's the equality that anybody, if you have one ApeCoin, you, you you have access to a $500 million treasury. Thanks, Bojangle Guy. And Dim, question for you. What is your favorite part of the ApeCoin DAO? Well, kind of the same, but maybe oriented in the community side, probably. Like, it's it's out of passion, right? You have a lot of passionate members of the community. And and maybe to jump back on this uh, polarized, like people seeing that these big wallets voting and saying that, oh, yeah, we, we stand no chance. But the community have a voice, and we saw it recently on Twitter, the community can influence stuff. And this is uh, what I prefer about it, yeah. Thank you. And All City, what is your favorite part of the ApeCoin DAO? It's absolutely the community. Uh, and for me, part of my, the biggest part of my, one of the biggest part of my jobs is trying to find balance. And so me trying to find balance between our biggest voters and our smallest voters is some of the most satisfying work that I could possibly do. And finding that common ground and uh, really just, again, working with the community. That is first and foremost, yeah. And 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 my own personal favorite part of the ApeCoin DAO is that this is a chance for me to be a part of something way bigger than just myself. This is a redefining and a reimagining of what governance can look like for our entire species going 100 years and beyond with future generations. And I get to be a part of that and contribute to it, just like I am right now as a volunteer being here as a community member in front of you all today. Uh, I forgot one final comment and then we close up is the topic, the really important topic of the sandbox. I think if I remember correctly, this morning I heard something and I need more info on it, but I heard something come up with the sandbox and I just remembered that we need to talk about it. So then maybe you can uh, elaborate. I think it's a very special one since sandbox is actually here today. And there is also a special studio that will be representing through the week. So a few uh, a, a months ago, the community was actually um, introduced to an AIP idea around building a sandbox experience around ApeCoin. And there was a call to Creative Studio to actually bring an idea on the table and to be selected to actually co-create, co-write an AIP with Metaverse and, and them. And I can announce today that the studio is called Swipe Back. You will be able to meet them today at the Sandbox uh, booth and at their talk later, but it's going to be a fun one. And don't forget, pass by the ApeCoin booth. It's just there and you have a lot of cool goodies to win. And uh, yeah, just talk about governance with this big guy here. Love it. Thank you, everyone, for your time. Thank I really appreciate our panelists here. Let's give a round of applause to them for their, their contributions in the DAO and governance in the world moving forward. Uh, thanks again to NFC Lisbon. It's great to be here. Don't forget to grab your T-shirts. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, everyone.